How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech and also to our look at the brand new Z690 motherboards from ASUS. Now this is not the only ASUS motherboard that I'm actually doing. I also did actually do an unboxing of the uh, ASUS Maximus Euro Z690 and this is now of course going to be of the Strix Z690e gaming Wi-Fi. Uh, now currently this is only going to be unboxing on both of these unfortunately that's all we're allowed to do as of yet so later on we'll be able to actually benchmark them and see how they perform along with the new intel cpus of course but so for today we're just going to do a little unboxing uh, go over some of the specs that it actually has not full details and everything but i do have uh, some uh, information that is quite new and very handy for future once we actually have CPUs. So we'll, we'll wait for that. Now pricing, I'm not exactly sure what it's going to be, but I expect it to be somewhat more expensive than the previous Z590 um, Strix E, Z65, Z590E, there we go. So it's probably going to be a bit more expensive compared to that one, but you also do get a DDR5 and a PCI Express 5 and a load of other features actually so it's actually quite worth it but anyway let's quickly go over the rest we do have a motherboard here nice and black and we do have a new uh, rgb design there which does look quite nice so far um, underneath the board we do get this little boxy with a what they call a hy uh, hyper m.2 card and it actually gives you two additional M.2 slots in a card format. So uh, you do have some additional M.2s, which I believe takes you all the way up to five M.2 slots available on this board. And I don't know, it just looks more badass if you have one of these actually in your system, don't you think? Like additional graphics card, not really, but it just looks more impressive. <laughs> more impressive. So you do have uh, that one and also a massive heat spreader on that card. So it's weird calling it a card, but that's what it is. All right, then next up, we do have some stuff under here. They do get your little lanyard, your Asus ROG lanyard, if you want to use that. The driver CD, um, you do have a little welcome card and then the manual and then some stickers. So Ruan, here's some stickers for you because you're probably gonna edit this video, so stickers. Um, now, You'll probably want to keep the manual because it's actually quite handy for motherboards knowing what works and what doesn't what ports may be disabled and, and so on what ports work with other ports because i do share bandwidth so just keep that in mind and uh, keep that one close by otherwise just you can get it online so it probably doesn't matter but anyway <laughs> moving on you do have your antenna for your wi-fi you do have multiple screws here for your m.2s little uh pad there and then also you do have a summer locks for your Q latch, uh, your Q latch um, design for your M.2s, which we'll get into. Not sure if everybody has, has seen that yet, but I believe it's only on ASUS motherboard so far. And it's just a game changer, <laughs> not really, but it's really, really cool that they do implement it for uh, M.2s. And then some uh, cable ties, and then also a GPU support a bracket, which is also pretty cool seeing as how massive and heavy current uh, RTX 3000 series G uh, GPUs are, uh, I forgot, you do get uh, some uh, SATA, four SATA cables. So if you want to use that, got a bunch of them just lying around. <laughs> All right, and then uh, moving on uh, towards uh, the motherboard and you do get this nice, large, full black armor design and you'll probably see already just this massive heat spreader here, which will go over. Uh, plenty integrated IO cover, a pretty cool design for your VRM heat spreader. I do kind of like that also down here for your chipset. Uh, at the back, uh, not really much going on here, some designs, that's pretty nice. So you do have some designs going on there, but we don't really care too much about that because it's at the back. Now, anyway, let's quickly jump into the CPU because of course it's going to be the LGA uh, 1700 socket for the Elder Lake CPUs. You're not gonna be able to use any previous generation uh, CPU. So 11th generation, 10th generation, which is uh, 11th, the LGA 1200 socket, you're not gonna be able to use that. And then also pretty different is that it actually opens up downwards now. So that's kind of different. Previously it was opening upwards. So 
just something that I noticed with the, the previous ASUS board, the, the Hero board. So um, just keep that in mind. I'm not sure if that's going to be a problem. But anyway, so this is going to require entirely a new CPU, but um, that's probably going to be a good thing because uh, from all of the leaks and everything, the CPUs do look to look, look to look pretty damn good. So I'm looking forward to actually testing those out. Now, moving on towards the VRMs, uh, I'm not sure exactly what VRMs they're using, but it does look to be pretty uh, decent ones. Uh, usually ASUS does a pretty decent job with their VRMs, so I'm not gonna worry too much about that. And also just thanks to the massive heat spreaders going on here, uh, temperatures also don't think will be a problem. Now it doesn't go all the way through here, so it's not entirely thick back there. You can actually do see through that, but it does go all the way to the back of the IO uh, shield here, and it does extend actually all the way towards the other side. So you do, it does follow entire heat, uh, heat pipe does go through there, which does support the thermal dissipation more. Uh, and it just looks pretty cool. So the entire design of the heat spray does look pretty uh, nice. Now, of course, that's gonna have to wait for the full review to see actually how the VRM temps are. So just stay tuned for that one. Now, moving on towards our memory. Now, of course, this is where you do get the new DDR5. I keep saying DDR. DDR5 RAM, which does start at around 4,800 megahertz and goes all the way up to like 8,000 megahertz, which is just kind of insane. And now there's gonna be a bit of a problem here. It's going to be fast and, and all of that, but it's gonna be expensive and I'm not sure about stock. So currently, when I, when I was still uh, reviewing or going over the uh, the Euro version of the, of the ASUS board, we only had two kits of DDR5 RAM and I believe that was pretty much the only ones here in South Africa. Now, now there's luckily a bit more, but it's really, really, really limited. And uh, I'm not sure how much is going to be available at launch. So keep that in mind, but there is going to be a, luckily a uh, alternative board if you want to go for that. I'm not sure if this version is going to have that, but you are going to uh, be able to get DDR4 models of the exact same boards as well. So you don't have to, if you already have a system and you just want to upgrade your CPU and your motherboard, let's say, you don't have to buy additional or a different RAM as well, uh, again and <laughs> pay a lot and get stock, of course. So, Personally, I would rather go for something like that if I was uh, to upgrade on my own. So um, that is going to be an option later on, but I'm not sure on the stock or the availability for those boards yet, or if all of the boards are actually going to come out in DDR4 versions as well. But now, not sure about this one again, but you are possibly going to have that option. Um, going over the RAM more, do you have a four DIMM slots, uh, again, DDR5, that is a dual channel and supports up to 128 gigs. Uh, so you're able to fit uh, 32 gigs per DIMM. So yeah, 128 gigs. And I believe also DDR5 actually starts at 16 gigs per DIMM. So it's not eight anymore or whatever. It actually starts at 16 gigs. <laughs> so that's pretty, pretty cool. Um, you do also get the support structure here uh, that does support the board from not bending too much, which I do uh, like. Now, moving on towards our PCI Express slots. Well, let's quickly go over our M.2s here because uh, I wanna get this out of the way. So you do actually have three M.2 slots on the board. And again, you do have that Hyper M.2 card. Now, here's gonna be one down here under this thing here, which we'll go over, and then two here as well. So they say uh, remove cushion before installation. We're just going to do that now already. Uh, haven't removed it yet, so this, you do get a bit of a standout heat spreader there, which it's going to depend on what, if you like it or not, but it's going to help with uh, heat dissipation and, and so on. They do have that. Um, up probably have to open this up quickly to show you guys because you do have their Q latch design, which is really awesome. I first need to find a screwdriver. Now, unfortunately we're not sponsored by iFixit, so uh, I'll have to use this kit here. <laughs> iFixit, if you want to sponsor us, <laughs> let me know. Um, now, again, going quickly over the specs of these. So the top one is a PCI Express 5 M.2 slot. So you'll be able to get pretty insane speeds out of these because they're pretty much 
a double the bandwidth of a DDR4 and DDR4 some of the M.2 was able to go over 7,000 megabytes a second so it's going to be quite quite quick I think We're going to be over 10 megabits, uh, megabytes a second so that's going to be crazy now I'm also not going to be sure about the pricing for those because I haven't seen any of those but I, I think they're going to be pretty expensive <laughs> Um, but uh, anyway, let's quickly go over the race. And then for the bottom ones are down here, they are actually a two a piece of express of four M.2. So you'll be able to get that extra speed out of these as well. So no need to worry about uh, any limitations there. It's only the top one that's piece express five though. Now, the nice thing again is ASUS actually includes now their Q latch system for their M.2s where you'll actually be able to lock your M.2 in a place. I'll throw up some footage here just to show you guys. But instead of you needing to actually have a screwdriver and especially if your board is like vertical and you need to put in a new uh, M.2 and screw it in place as well, it's sometimes a struggle, uh, especially because there's, the screws are so, so small. But now here, all, all you need to do is actually lock it in place, switch it, and it's going to block the M.2 in place and you don't have to worry about anything. And it's honestly, it's just brilliant. It's, it's a small thing that really uh, makes it just your life so much easier. And speaking about easier as well, let's move on towards the PISA Express slots. Now, you do get a four here with the top one being also a PISA Express five. It's only the top one, unfortunately, but I don't believe that's going to be a problem. And it does also feature ASUS's uh, armor design. I'm not exactly sure again what you call it, but they, it does support the heavier GPUs and prevent, uh, prevents the board from uh, bending. Um, now you do get an additional, so that's a 16X a slot running at full 16X speed, and you do get a two 16X slots here, but uh, the, bot, the middle one is only PCI Express 3, and is also running at 4X a speed, whereas uh, the uh, bottom one is a PCI Express 4, 4, <laughs> and then also running at uh, uh, four times speed. So it's only the top one running at full 16 times speed, but these are just nice for additional add-on cards. So again, for example, that Hyper M.2 card, it's going to fit here at the bottom for the Pizza Express 4 slot. So be able to get that super speed out of your M.2s, because again, that also does support Pizza Express 4. Uh, PCI Express 4 M.2s. And then also you do get a single lonely PCI Express 3 1X slot running at 1X. So uh, that's just also again for some additional cards that you might want to uh, connect up there. I'm not exactly sure what uses just 1X nowadays, but you do have the other ones if you want that. Now let's get into the second new feature that ASUS added. And again, I'm not sure if anybody else really does this, but you do actually get a Q release button for your PCI Express slot. So you know sometimes if you do have your like, GPU in uh, inside your system and you want to swap it out with something and it's a massive GPU and you've got heat sinks and all and everything on your M.2s and so on, it's sometimes a struggle to get your finger inside there, especially if you've got a smaller case. We need to get like a screw screwdriver and just cram it in there. But now all you need to do is press this button. It's actually a cable that goes from here to here and actually pulls it open and you can just take it out. That is just, again, same with the Q latch, just a brilliant design. Something small that, again, makes your life so much easier. So you do have that one, press that. I'm not sure on a, of, if it's gonna be on all of the boards. Uh, the Hero did have that, and the Strix E does also have the, the Z690E as that as well. Um, but great design, just love it. All right, now moving on towards our I.O. I believe that's most of the stuff on the board there. Moving towards our I.O. Again, you do have an integrated I.O. shield here, which is just nice, kind of standard nowadays. And for your I.O., you do have an HDMI port, a display port, because again, Intel CPUs does kind of come with our integrated graphics, which is nice. Not sure how great it's going to be, but you do have that option. And also not sure exactly what versions of these are. You do get your clear CMOS button and then also a BIOS flashback button, quite a bit smaller than some of the other buttons we usually see, but anyway. Now for our USBs here, the blue ones, these ones are USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports. And then for our red ones are down here, these ones are type A's, these ones are USB 3.2 Gen 2 
but not X2. So they're at 10 gigabits a second. Same with the type C port here. It's also the 10 gigabits yeah, one. And then the USB C type C here. This one is actually USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2, 20 gigabits a second. So <laughs> naming schemes for USB is just stupid entirely. But anyway, for our, uh, Ethernet here, you do have a 2.5 gigabits Ethernet port, our Wi Fi 6E with a Bluetooth 5.1, I believe, and then also our standard um, audio connections are there. Um, nothing too crazy going on there. Now, quickly go over the brace of the ports alongside the board. I right, think we can run over those. So you do get a, a dual 8-pin CPU power. You do have, uh, okay, let's quickly go for here. And of course, your standard 24-pin um, for your motherboard power. For our fans, you do have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, eight. Uh, PWM a fan header, so plenty of uh, there. You do actually get so it's for your IO pump here and for your chassis fan here. So it's kind of a bit different usually, but anyway, that's fine. So up here, you do also get your QLED, uh, your QLEDs there and your Q code here as well to make sure that if there's something going wrong with your boot, that's just an easy way to find out there. You do have your type C USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 port and then your normal uh, type A ports, USB 3.2 Gen 2 only, I believe, for those. Six SATA, SATA 3 ports. So pretty standard there. Um, then you do have your Thunderbolt header over here. You do have your T sensor, your thermal sensor over here. Um, and then I'm not exactly sure what this one is over there. I'm not sure about that one, but uh, you do have your two USB uh, headers here as well, USB 2s. And then for our RGB, you do have your two addressable RGB headers up there and up and down here, and then also your 12 volt up here and down there. Alrighty, so I think that's pretty much everything for now on the ASUS Strix Z690E. Uh, what am I missing? A gaming Wi-Fi board. <laughs> I think that's pretty much it for now. Um, of course, later on, we're going to do a full review with actually a CPU in included once that's actually available. Um, and then we're gonna go over everything else, going over the, the VRMs and the benchmarks and, and so on, actually actually seeing how the CPUs perform as well. But well, we'll see when that actually happens. <laughs> but anyway, that's pretty much it. I do hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, and comment like always. And then I will check all of you guys next time. Cheers, guys.